In this example problem, we're going to create a load versus short-term deflection plot um, at the end of the beam uh, for the section below. And we're given the three points that we want to find. So point 0.3, point 0.6, and point 0.9 uh, kip per foot distributed load. And we're going to use the ACI effective moment of inertia uh, procedure. So our first step is going to be to calculate our uh, I gross, our M cracking, and our I crack transformed. So our I gross we can find uh, simply as B, which is 14 inches, times H, 21 inches to the third, divided by 12. And this will give us an I gross of 10,805 inches to the fourth. Our M crack transformed then can be found uh, Fi over Y, which our F, which is the tensile strength of our concrete, seven and a half roots, 3,000 PSI. Our I we just found as 10,805 inches to the fourth. And divide all this by our Y, which is the distance from our neutral axis or, or centroid um, to the um, extreme tension fiber. So the center of the section to our extreme tension fiber. So in our case, this will be um, 21 inches divided by 2. And then I'm going to take all this uh, times 1,000 uh, pounds uh, per kip to give us units of kip inches. So we'll have 422.7 kip inches. So we have our I gross and our M crack. We also need to find our D and our D prime. So our D, the distance from the top to the centroid of our steel, and our D prime, the distance from the top or our compression fiber to the centroid of our um, compression steel. So our D is the overall height, 21 inches, minus our cover, 1.5 inches, minus the diameter of our stirrup, which we're told is a number four bar, which has a diameter of half of an inch, and then minus the diameter of our longitudinal bar, which is uh, 1.5 for one inches divided by two and we'll get a d equal to 18.3 inches similarly we can find d prime is equal to our cover 1.5 inches plus the diameter of our stirrup half of an inch plus half of the diameter of our compression steel so half of a uh, number eight bar, one inch. And we'll get our D prime to be equal to 2.5 inches. So we next need to find our cracked transformed uh, moment of inertia. So to do that, we need to first find um, the depth of our neutral axis KD. So we'll find our EC, which is uh, 57,000 um, square root of F prime C divided by a thousand pounds uh, per kip will be 57,000 times 3,000 uh, PSI, uh, which will give us 3,122 KSI. We can then find our uh, modular ratio, which is 29,000 uh, KSI divided by 3,122 KSI, which will give us an N of 9.3. Uh, we next need to find our KD, and we'll do that by summing our areas uh, above the neutral axis times the distance from the neutral axis to the central to that area, um, and set it equal to the areas below our neutral axis times the distance from the neutral axis to the central to that area. Um, so we have three areas. We have um, the uncracked concrete, one, and the distance from the centroid uh, to the neutral axis for one. We have our compression steel, our transformed compression steel, 
and the distance from the centroid to the neutral axis for 2. So that's at above the neutral axis. And then below we have just our transform steel, and then the distance from the centroid to the neutral axis 3. Uh, so I did this for us. Uh, B times KD is 1. Um, N minus 1 A S prime uh, times KD minus D is 2. And then N A S times D minus KD is 3. Um, so we can plug in all of our values now. So we know our B is 14 inches divided by 2 times KD squared plus 9.3 minus 1 times our AS prime, which we have uh, three number 8 bars, times our KD minus our D prime, 2.5, plus, or, or sorry, equal to, uh, 9.3 times our AS, uh, which we had four uh, number 11 bars, 1.56, and then times our D, which is 18.3, minus KD. So we can see that this is going to be a, a quadratic, so I'm going to simplify things um, in terms of a quadratic. So we'll have 7 kd squared plus 77.7 .7 times kd, and then minus 1,011, or 1,111.2, 1 uh, and this is equal to 0. And we can solve this, and we'll find our kd is equal to 8.22 inches. We can use our uh, KD and our parallel axis theorem to then find our I crack transformed. So our I crack transformed is going to be the summation of our different areas, um, the moment of inertia of that area, uh, plus the area of that area times the distance from the centroid um, of that area to the neutral axis squared. Um, so we'll have our area 1, our area 2, and our area 3. And um, for our steel areas, we're going to neglect the um, moment of inertia of the steel itself and just consider the AD squared component. Um, so you can see we have our um, component 1, our AD squared component for 1. We have our AD squared component for 2 and our a d squared component for 3. So now plugging in our values, we'll have our b 14 inches times 8.22 inches to the third divided by 12 plus 14 inches times 8.22 inches times 8.22 divided by 2 squared plus our n minus 1, so 9.3 minus 1, times our AS, 3 number 8 bars, or AS prime, um, times our KD, so 8.22 inches minus D prime, 2.5 inches squared. And then our last component, our um, AS, 9.3 times 3, number 11 bars uh, times D, 18.3 minus 8.22 squared. Um, and this will give us an I cracked um, transformed equal to 9,132 um, inches to the fourth. Our next step is to find our moment caused by our applied loads. So we know that for a, a cantilever beam with a distributed load, we have a moment um, at the support equal to WL squared over 2. 
So our moment under applied load 1 is going to be our W.3 kips per foot times our length, 18 feet squared, divided by 2, uh, which will give us, and then, I'm sorry, times 12 inches per foot, um, is going to give us uh, 583 uh, kip inches. We can do the same thing then for our next load, 0.6 kips per foot times 18 feet squared divided by 2 times 12 inches per foot. To get our units right is 1,166 kip inches. And then doing the same thing for our 0.9, so 0.9 kips per foot times our 18 feet squared divided by 2 uh, times our 12 inches per foot is going to give us 1,700 and 50 uh, kip inches. So we have our, our three um, applied no moments now. We can use these applied moments then um, with the, the section properties that we found in the first step to find our effective moment of inertia. Um, so you can see that one of the terms in our effective moment of inertia is m cracked over ma. Um, so I'm going to pre-calculate that for e each of our steps. So under our, our first loading, our M crack is uh, 422.7 kip inches. And divided by our MA at, um, under the first loading is 583.0 uh, kip inches. Uh, to give us an M crack over MA of 0 0.7. Uh, to five. Uh, so then we can plug that into our I um, effective expression, so 0.725 uh, to the third times our I gross 10,805 um, inches to the fourth um, plus 1 minus 0 0.725 to the third times our I crack transformed, 9,132 um, inches to the fourth, uh, which will give us an I effective of 9,760 inches to the fourth. Uh, we can do the same thing for point two, and if we do the same thing for point two, we'll get an M crack over M A2 of point three six two, and an, and an I E, of 9,198 um, inches to the fourth. And then for point three, we'll get uh, 0 0.242 and an IE3 of 9,142 um, inches to the fourth. Uh, so you can see that as we are increasing our load, our effective moment of inertia is decreasing. And finally, we can find the deflection um, at the end of our beam. Um, so we know that the deflection at the end of a uh, cantilever, uh, fixed cantilever beam is WL to the fourth over 8EI. Um, so we can use this expression um, to find our deflection under our different loadings. Um, so under our first loading, we have a load of 0.3 um, kips per foot. I'm going to going to convert this uh, 1 foot divided by 12 inches um, to inches to kips per inch um, times 18 feet times 12 inches per foot to the fourth divided by 8 times our E which is 3122 KSI times our I, so this will be our I under our first, our I effective under our first loading um, is 9,760 inches to the fourth. So we'll get our delta one to be 0 0.22 inches. 
Um, so we can do the same thing for our delta 2, um, where we'll have 0.6 times 1 over 12 uh, times 18 times 12 to the fourth divided by 8 times 3,122 and then times our I effective for our 0.2. So our I effective for 0.2 was uh, 9,198 inches to the fourth. Um, so we'll get our deflection here to be um, 0 0.47 inches. And we can do the same thing for delta 3, and we'll get a deflection of 0.72 inches. And uh, we can plot then our different points. So we could plot our um, delta 1 versus our w1, our w2, delta 2, and our delta 3 uh, versus w3. And we could connect these points. Um, and normally, we'll just connect them linearly. Um, and refine the plot by um, increasing the number of points in between. So that concludes our example.